Here are a few examples where the average treatment effect is zero, but there are still important treatment effects that are not captured by the ATE. So this is to show that the ATE can be very useful and can show us important effects, uh, but it also has some limitations and there are important effects that it can miss. So in the first example, imagine there's some uh, like professional skills program for workers and uh, it's very helpful for some workers but it's not helpful for others and actually uh, sort of takes away from their uh, other things they could be doing so that actually the effect is either positive three dollars an hour on their wage or potentially negative three dollars an hour on their wage and there's just a one-half probability of each outcome. Well, if we think about the ATE, so the mean of the treatment effects here, we said half of people got the positive three and oops, the other half of people get a negative three. So if we plug those into the expected value formula, we can see that positive three and negative three will just cancel out. So our average treatment effect is zero. But this is sort of misleading because actually there is no individual in the population who has a zero effect. Everybody has a big effect of $3 an hour. It's just half of them it's positive and half of them it's negative. And that's the first example. And the second example, and again, these are, you know, simplified a bit just to make the numbers easier, but the sort of underlying concepts can be uh, actually found in the real world. So for the second example, imagine we have a value of, of three for our Uh, untreated potential outcome and then what happens with the treatment is most individuals actually 90% of them end up moving down so they're actually hurt by the treatment, but there are 10% uh, of individuals who end up getting really helped by the treatment. So we end up with something like this, where the original uh, folks, most of them move down to one, some of them move up to 21. So in this case, again, we can think what is the ATE, but we'll use the other formulation so we can see immediately, since everybody has the same untreated uh, potential outcome, that's just three for everyone. And then for the treated, we said 90% uh, of people end up with yt equals 1, and 10% of people end up with yt equals 21. So 
So that'll be 0.9 plus 2.1, which is also 3, which means our ATE is 0. 3 minus 3 equals 0. So again, in this case, if we look at the ATE, it would seem to suggest the treatment doesn't do anything. But actually, in this case, it hurts 90% of individuals. And then there's 10% who have this really big increase. As the third and final example for this video, We'll imagine that we have our untreated, uh, sorry, it's plus nine. Our untreated potential outcomes are either negative nine or positive nine, each with one half probability. And then for the, so this is untreated, untreated, treated, treated. And in this case, what the treatment does is it moves the distribution in like that. So instead of negative 9, positive 9, now it's negative 2 and positive 2. Um, so we can see, again, if we take the mean treated outcome, it's averaging, and we said there's one half probability for each value in each case. So we'll get 1 half times negative 2 plus 1 half times positive 2, which is 0. And similarly, for the untreated outcomes, we just had negative 9 and positive 9. So that's also 0. So again, our ATE is the difference of those mean potential outcomes, which is 0 minus 0, which is definitely 0. So again, in this third example, the ATE is 0, suggests there's no effect. But there actually is this very important compression effect where uh, the untreated distribution is a lot more spread out, negative 9, positive 9 and the treated distribution is much more compressed, negative 2, positive 2. Um, again, not saying if that's good or bad, might depend on the uh, empirical setting, but clearly there is an important effect that's happening that's not captured by the ATE.